Sir Francis. in haste from Plymouth. The Spanish Armada has sailed. The Spaniards are sailing towards our shores. Persuaded by some that are careful of our safety to take heed how we commit ourselves to armed multitudes for fear of treachery. But I assure you, I do not desire to live in distrust of my faithful and loving people. I know I have but the body of a weak and feeble woman. No! I have the heart and stomach of a prince. Yeah! And of a prince of England. And think it foul scorn that Spain or any prince of Europe should dare invade the borders of my realm. Mrs. Lucas insisted that all the credit was due to Mrs. Drake, who had organized the whole thing and had done all the speed work. Mm. Well, that's very generous of you, Lucia. I'm glad to see that nobody believed it. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> look, 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 look. Isn't that a photograph of Daisy? What a pity she moved. Oh, yes. Do you know, I think the way you handled the collapse of that ship was absolutely brilliant. Well, as they say, you turned the whole thing into a personal triumph. Poor cooks, though. Well, Drenched. <laughs> well, well, Daisy would say, Oh, look, they've fallen into the water. We must stop. <laughs> oh, we're so proud of you, Lucia. Dear Georgie. <laughs> All over now. All over now. Yes. We're on our way to Tilling for our summer sojourn. Yes. <laughs> Yeah. 
up, Georgie. No, no, don't be alarmed, Mr. Pilson. We're not staying. No, no. <laughs> Just to welcome you and see you settled in. Oh, very kind. A few flowers to say. Do you do? Oh, very kind. Oh, this is my trusted fall jam who looks after me. Do you do? The kitchen is through there. Thank you, sir. And your room is at the end of the landing. Upstairs. Thank you, Mum. <laughs> so, now we will leave you alone. Oh. oh. <laughs> My stupid servants. I beg your pardon. They seem so proud of it. That graciously bestowed on me, member of the British Empire. By the king. For services to Tilling Hospital. Oh, well, congratulations. <laughs> <laughs> Where is my mouth? Oh, I think I saw it over here, ah. Mrs. Wise. Thank you. Oh. We have heard of your skill at painting, Mr. Pilson. Oh. Angela and I are on the hanging committee of our little local gallery. I wonder if we might be favoured by a work of your own. Oh, that's very kind. I couldn't help noticing it. Quite. <laughs> Rather good, isn't it? Mm. Portrait by Scapolini of my sister Amelia. The Contessa di Ferreglione. She lives in Naples now. Oh, of course, I can see the resemblance. <laughs> we are hoping that she will pay us a visit this summer. Oh, we hear from Miss Mapp that you and Mrs. Lucas speak excellent Italian. It will be a pleasure to hear two, nay, three fluent tongues. Yes, yes, of course, pleasure. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> now, Algernon, we really must leave Mr. Pilson to his own devices. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> oh, <Au> reservoir, <laughs> as we say in Tilling. <laughs> <laughs> My dear Mrs. Lucas, here you are at last. I said, some time this afternoon, Miss Matt? Time in Tilling is not of the essence. Mm. I couldn't rest in my mind till I knew you had arrived safely. Most thoughtful. Your maid and your cook have already managed to make themselves at home. Ah, we are all martyrs to our servants. Tilling has been absolutely avid in reading the picture papers about the Rism fate. What a triumph. Thank you. Miss Mapp? Oh, please, please call me Elizabeth. Of course. And you must call me Lucia. Of course. How dreadful all this publicity must be for you, dear. How you must shrink from it. Sweet of you to be so sympathetic, but it was my duty to help, dearism. I don't regard the consequences to myself. No, no, of course not. So public spirited. Well, I must be off to dear Mrs. Plasto's humble little house. Don't hesitate to get in touch with her if there's anything you need, anything at all. I'm sure I'll find everything in order. Then, oh, reservoir. <laughs> Just a little risible phrase I picked up a few years ago. <laughs> From me, as it happens. Oh? Two years ago, when you visited Rism, I had introduced the risible phrase. I bow to your superior memory, my dear. So, goodbye for the present. <laughs> Blumenfeld. Yes, Cadman? Everything is in its place, madam. Thank you. I hope you'll be comfortable here. Oh, I'm sure I shall be, ma'am. Uh. I... I wonder if I could have a word with you, madam. Of course. Well, ma'am, it's Mr. George's fault, Jim. We're thinking of getting married. I guessed something of the sort was in the air. The trouble is that Doris... I mean, Fulgham, don't think she can bring herself to tell Mr. Georgie. Yet she don't want him to find out casual-like. When do you plan to get married? Oh, not till after we get back to Rizzo, ma'am. Oh. So that will give Mr. Georgie 
two months to get through with. Yeah, of course. Fortune says you're the only one to make him see it in the right light. Very well, Cadman. I'll do what I can. Mr. Georgie is dining here this evening. Thank you very much. I'm sure, Mum. Blumenfeld. Good afternoon. You must be Copland. Copland, ma'am. Aye, Copland. Mm -hmm. Miss Mapp will have told you that you are working for me these next two months. Are? Mm -hmm. There seem to be a great number of weeds in the flower beds. That there be, ma'am. And the grass is over long, surely. Are. So, we must have a little chat very soon. Whenever you say, ma'am. Mm -hmm. Where exactly are you taking that wheel, Barrow? Twisty Vance. Twist? The greengrocer. Up the high street. Mr. Pilson, ma'am. Thank you, Grosvenor. Good evening, oh, Georgie. Yes, <laughs> very chic. And I see we think alike, not dressed. Like the first night out on board ship. Georgina, hmm? before we go a step further, I insist you try Miss Mapp's piano. The famous Blumenfeld. Exactly. Mm. Upon which we are to play our Mozartino duets. Mm. No, not another word. Sit. Exactly. What are we going to do? I shall hire one from Brighton. But where will you put this hurdy gurdy? Push it somewhere else. <laughs> There's a sort of telephone room come study across the hall. Oh, my dear, not a very good beginning. No. I can see one or two problems arising. None that will defeat you, I'm sure. We shall see what we shall see. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I can't tell you how cosy we are at the cottage. Georgino, before we go a step further, I've got something to tell you. Oh, I'm sure I shall like it. No, you won't like it at all. So, so, something about Foljam. Yes, she and Cadman are going to be married. Oh, my God. When? Not till we get back to Rism. This is the most dreadful thing that ever happened to me. No, She's been with me for 15 years. I didn't think she could be so selfish. My dear, you can get another parlour maid. Well, if it comes to that, Cadman can get another wife. Oh, my God. You'll miss Cadman, too. Why should Cadman leave me? He said nothing about it. But perhaps Foljam doesn't mean to leave me. <gasps> Georgino, me, you. She'll have to look after his house during the day. And then at night, he'd... He'd like it to be there. Oh, to think I've left her 500 pounds in my will. Now I shall have to add a codicil, if still in my employ. But after you're dead, Georgie, you won't miss the 500 pounds. I've a good mind to go and live in an hotel. My dear, the front door's on the latch. Oh, good evening, Mr. Pilson, and welcome to Tilling. Very kind. The door was on the latch, and I have forgotten to remove my hot water bottle. The nights can be quite chilly when it's high tide, even in the summer. No, don't put yourself out. I can find it quite easily if I rout around a bit. Do forgive me. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> that sort of thing cannot go on for very long. She should ring the front doorbell and wait for Grove now. Foljam. I 
just can't believe it. George, I've got an idea. Mm. Suppose back in Rism, Foljam came to your house at, say, nine every morning and stayed till after dinner. Well? You often dine out. And on those nights, she could get away earlier. Well. Of course. You'd have to give the mature woman to do the housework. Anything she wants, if only she'll look after me as before. Of course, I realise there'll be periods when she has to be away, but she's rather too old for that, don't you think? Babies? Well, no matter. Now, shall I congratulate her warmly? No. I think I'll be very cold and not talk to her at all. She'd hate that and might promise anything to see me less unhappy. Or it might make her marry a Cadman on the spot in order to have done with you. Oh, you may be right. I'll never manage to call her Cadman. She must keep her maiden name, like an act. Say sorry. I must have removed the hot water bottle after all, but I found this dear little sewing box full of silver thimbles. Oh, <laughs> so, now I really am off. Au reservoir. Oh. <laughs> this darting in and out cannot go on. And does this mean war? Lucia? No, Giorgino mio. Not yet. Dear lady. Major Flint. Off to the links, I see. Ah. Off seeking the muses, I see. <laughs> Which reminds me. I know how busy you are, but would you care to dine a Casimir this Wednesday week? Dinner. Good gracious. Does Tilling not dine? Oh, certainly, Mrs. Lucas. Of course, but uh, tea is our customary social entertainment. Then we must change a few usual things, don't you think? Wednesday week. By Jove, I think I can. Yes, I can. Delighted. I shall ask Mr. Pilson, and perhaps... Uh... Uh, Miss Mapp? Possibly. Don't you think it might be a trifle upsetting for her? A guest in her own house. Possibly. Yes. Yes. I thought. Mrs. Plaster? Dear Diver, how delightful. Uh, shall we say eight o'clock? Eight bit by mouth, without fail on the dot. And a tiny rubber of bridge to follow? Delightful. Thank you. Au reservoir. Oh. Reservoir. <laughs> Find the time today. I beg your pardon. Might get a man in to do it. No. You get a man to do whatever you're doing. And Miss Mapp. She wants me to manure the strawberry beds today. But what has Miss Mapp to do with it? You are in my employ. Seems fair, ma'am. Very well. Still. My orders is to go to Miss Mapp of a morning, and she tells me what she wants done. In future, you will come to me of a morning and see what I want done. 
Leave those baskets and start on the lawn at once. No strawberry bed shall be manured today or any other day until the garden looks less like a tramp who hasn't shaved for a month. Again. Good gracious, you gave me quite a start. So sorry to interrupt your sweet music, Lucia Mia. But the Blumenfeld. It didn't respond to my touch. But it belonged to my mother and her mother before her. I have no reason to doubt it, dear. But where is it? I had it moved into the telephone room. Well, then how will you get to the telephone? Oh, just enough room for me to squeeze by. I do calisthenics, you know. Anyhow, that isn't what I popped in about. I think it best if you didn't pop in, Elizabeth dear, without the customary courtesies, a telephone call or a ring at the front doorbell. Yes, of course, I must remember. But I've really come round about a little misunderstanding. So much better to clear it up at once. So I came instantly. They rather rushed. My good Coplin has come to me in great perplexity. Ah, uh, yes? I'm sure he misunderstood what you said to him this morning. I can't think how. He told me he had no time to mow the lawn today, as he had to manure your strawberry beds. Exactly. I said the lawn at once, or words to that effect. I think he hadn't grasped that for the time being, he is in my employ. But my garden produce, dear Lulu, what use is it to me if it is left to rot until the wasps and slugs get at it? No doubt, but what is the use of Copland to me, who pay his wages, if he spends his entire time on your garden produce, to which I have no access? Well, that was part of our agreement, dear. I don't deny that, but I pay for his time, and I intend to have it. Lulu, anything is better than that you and I should have a misunderstanding, such a dear as you are. There. I yield. If you can spare Copland for an hour each morning, no more, to take my little fruits and vegetables down to Twistivans. <laughs> Such a quaint name, isn't it? <laughs> Quite impossible, I'm afraid. Dear Elizabeth, Copland has been neglecting the flower garden dreadfully. You must find someone else to do that. Precious one, it shall be exactly as you wish. Now I must run away. Oh, while I think of it, I suppose you're not free to dine with me next Wednesday. I could ask Major Benji to join us. He raves about you, wicked woman, stealing all the hearts of Tilling. Sweet of you, Elizabeth, dear. I am giving a tiny party of my own that evening. Just one or two popping in. Are you really? One or two? Dinner? What a pity. Another time, perhaps? Yes, perhaps. Well, isn't it? Oh, George. Of course she knew about my little dinner party. One can't keep that sort of thing secret in Tilling any more than one can in Rizm. She was simply waiting to be asked. And you fight her? My dear, what do you take me for? Mm -hmm. No. Every now and then, a gentle slap on the wrist. Thank you, Grosvenor. Madam? Oh, by the way, Grosvenor, in future, will you always put the chain on the front door? Well, I always do at night, madam. Oh, I know. But I want it on during the day as well. Very good, madam. This must mean war. <laughs> Not in the least, Georgia. A benevolent neutrality until she learns sense. Mm -hmm. Well, my news is good. Oh. Fall Jam has agreed to stay on after they're married. <laughs> George, yes. what wonderful news. <laughs> so we can all enjoy tonight. Oh, let's. <laughs> oh, there she is. Oh. <laughs> oh, so. Mrs. Plasto, my dear. How nice of you to come to my first little dinner party. Oh, how nice of you to ask me, <laughs> Mr. Oh. Wilson. Good evening, Mrs. Plasto. <laughs> oh, please sit down yes. and have an aperitivo. Oh, should I? Oh, I don't think I should, should I? Oh, well. oh very well. Oh. <laughs> 
fun. Yes, Major Flint will be joining us shortly. I hope we all eat lobster. Oh, lobster a la rhythm, is it? Oh. One of my little specialities. Oh, it's scrumptious, Mrs. Plasto. Oh, I'm sure we do. Uh, cherry? Yes, please. There we are. <laughs> Living so close to the sea. Yeah. Oh, good health. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> Well, all I can say is quay high. I know, I know it's not considered polite to, to, to comment on the hostess's dinner, but that was delicious as always. May we know its secret? Just lobster. A dash of this and a dab of that. A recipe that my great aunt discovered in Normandy. And I know how fond Yagadiva is of fresh figs. Mm -hmm. But how did you know? I consider it my duty to find out the likes and dislikes of my guests. Molto grazioso. <laughs> Mind you, I find it a rather roundabout business to buy these figs at twist events when I know they have been plucked in the garden here. Mm. <laughs> but surely Elizabeth includes garden produce? Oh, no, dear. Just flowers for the house. She sells the fruit and vegetables to twist events. But I've let my house to her and included garden produce because I thought she gave you hers. No. Yeah, just flowers. So she's selling yours and eating mine. <clears throat> but I gather it was all agreed. Yes. And I like her so much. What do a few figs matter? Mm -hmm. mm. Mm. You don't give a fig, eh? 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 Don't give a fig! <laughs> they are delicious. It's steady on. I mean, she's got my house with fruit and vegetables for eight guineas a week, and she lets hers without them for twelve. No, dear. I pay fifteen. Fifteen? Oh, she told me. What's wrong with that? All's fair in love and war. But it's down in Woolgar's books at twelve. Dear Elizabeth? So glad she was sharp enough to get a few more guineas. Astute businesswoman. And now, how about a jolly little rubber of bridge? Oh, what <laughs> Come along. I have some special nougat for you. Don't be too long, gentlemen. Uh, well, Major, um, would you like a, a, a glass of port? Ah, if it's all the same to you, old man, I'd, uh, I'd sooner have a chota peg. Uh, shall I help myself? Yes, I'm sure that would be in order. And I have. I do believe we've. Uh, yes. yes, I am the loser. No matter. I have never bought experience so cheaply. Congratulations <laughs> to you both. Congratulations. <laughs> Another drink, Major? Oh, that's uncommonly civil of you, madam. Georgie, I am. Uh, Chuta Pig, Major. Very kind. Oh, this really has been the most agreeable evening of bridge. A great pleasure. When I think of the scoldings I've had in this very room from you-know-who, and the friction there's been, <clears throat> well, Major Flint will support me. Oh, come, come, Mrs. Plasto, charity. Elizabeth Mapp is a forceful character, thank you, but uh, none the worse for that. Oh, well. 
I do believe there are some men who enjoy playing second fiddle. Good heavens, look at the time. We must go. My dear, the night is still young. Is there any nougat left, George? Thanks. <laughs> 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 As I said to Mrs. Lucas, a wonderful evening of bridge and a dinner. A dish of lobster, the like of which... Hey, so I heard from Mr. Splice to uh, all honour to our new acquisition. Mm -hmm. Well, that's the situation of a garden produce. As for me, I shall refuse to buy my fruit and vegetables from the twist events. What Elizabeth has done is more than unlawful. It's underhand. Would I dare say the subject will come up too late? Tonight? Algernon and I are dining with Mrs. Lucas. We pride ourselves on having our own weapons. I hear from our friend Miss Mapp that you speak the most fluent Italian. Ah, che bella lingua. Bella. Ma ho dimenticato tutto. Non parla nessuno in resume. Thank you, Mr. Felsner. <laughs> you will have a chance soon to speak plenty of Italian. My sister Emilia is coming to stay. The Contessa di Ferraglione. We can soon look forward to a veritable feast of Italian. <laughs> How delightful! Georgie, we shall have to brush up on our Italian. You see, ancora. <laughs> Subito. Absolutely. Oh, no, not that you'll have much need of that, I imagine. Thank you, Mr. Pilsen. Well, we have heard a great deal about your Elizabethan fate in Rizm. Such a success. We did our best. How we need somebody in Tilling to organize schemes like that. My wife does what she can, of course, our but... Our hospital is still desperately in need of funds. You know, we've been discussing the possibility of holding a garden get-together or what you will. Oh, nothing as grand as your Elizabethan do, of course. Tableau that? vivant, that sort of thing. Half a crown a time. Entry. My services are entirely at your disposal, my dear. Thank you, George. Anything I can do to help the garden here, for instance, would that be a suitable venue for what you have in mind? The ideal spot all tilling would flock here at your bidding. <laughs> Permission has never been granted by Miss Mapp, however admirable the cause. Your Scottish stories, poetry, I can never help them too often. Well, uh, maybe. Just uh, fill in the wee pauses between the tableau. And, and, and Mrs. Plastow is so comical. The seasick passenger on the orange. <laughs> orange is not too many to be had. Perhaps she could manage with a tomato. Um, well, it is a possibility. Not quite the same. No, no I suppose not. And of course, uh, quaint Irene is a first rate mimic. Her boy stood on the burning deck. Perfect. Perhaps you would read a phrase or two from your Indian diary. Phrase or two? Uh, I, I mean a page or two. Yes. Under the famous fig tree, perhaps. Yeah. So good for our drawing. Yes. In Rizm, of course, we did nothing but clouds and trees, did we? Yeah. I'm worried about that crooked chimney on your house. Are you? Oh. I think I shall put it straight. Oh, do you think that's a good idea? Mm -hmm. People might think I did it by accident. Well, why not make it more crooked? Then there'd be no doubt, would there? What a good idea. Beep. 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 Oh, well, you can't. Beep. Thousand apologies. I had no idea who it was. Oh, <laughs> oh. May I glance? Exactly. <laughs> Exquisite. Our crooked chimney. Thank you. <laughs> Mr. Pilsen. Mm, with pleasure, Mr. Pilsen. <laughs> <laughs> it's, uh, it's, uh, Our church. church yes. Wonderful. Oh, thank you. I shall look forward to their completion. Yes. Oh, reservoir. Reservoir. Thank you very much. <laughs> Drive round the other way. Yes. yes. 
how quickly it's coming together. And Mr. and Mrs. Y should form a garden party committee as soon as possible. Good heavens! Whatever can that be? We shall see what we shall see. May I come in there? Of course. Elizabeth, dear. And the Padre. Good afternoon. God be we here, Mistress Mapp. Well, I must have uh, My Sunday sermon, you can. Or reservoir, Mistress Lucas. Mm -hmm. Mistress Mapp. Lulu, dear, such a stupid accident. I gave the door a teeny little push. We heard something of the sort. Your servants had forgotten to take the chain off. But didn't Grosvenor answer the door when you rang? Forgot, dear, forgot. Didn't want to trouble her. You and I, such friends. So difficult to remember I've left Mallards. Several things I want to talk about. Let me see, Grosvenor. The hasp must have been rusty. My fault. No sign of rust that I can see. Grosvenor, go at once to the ironmonger and get them to come and repair it. Yeah, yes, ma'am. You see, in Tilling, we all keep our doors on the latch. The fact that it wasn't took me by surprise. You didn't come to speak to me about locks and doors, I'm sure, even if forced open. No. I wanted to ask you a favour. You possibly know that I am president of the Art Society. No. But I'm not at all surprised. See, many of your little pictures on the walls here. Uh, Mr. Wise's treasurer and Mrs. Wise's secretary. Every year, we invite Tillingites to submit their work. Most worthy. May we beg you to let us have a little something for our picky exhibition? But I'm not a Tillingite, dear Elizabeth. We're not strictly speaking, dear, no. But we have taken you to our hearts, pro tem, and vice versa, I hope. Then? It would be churlish of me to refuse. Bravo. Though how you find time for everything beats me. Your sweet music, your bridge, your calisthenics, your dinner parties night after night. I hope you've asked Mr. Pilson to submit one of his masterly watercolours. We have indeed. When I say we, I refer, of course, to the hanging committee, Mr. and Mrs. Wise and myself. Three is enough for a committee, don't you think? That's what I always say. Good. Well, I will take myself off. Oh, there is just one other little thing. Yes, dear? I'm sure it's just tittle-tattle, but I have heard a little gossip about a garden get-together, whatever that may be, in aid of our hospital, to be held here, in my garden, of all places. So? I thought it best if I heard from your own lips that there's no foundation for the rumour. Yes, Elizabeth, dear, every foundation, as you put it. Nothing elaborate, mind you, a few tableau vivants, some recitations, madrigals, that sort of thing. I'm sorry, dear one, but I cannot possibly permit it. The rag, tag and bobtail of tilling passing through my house, trampling on my flower beds, ruining the carpet. The price of admission will be half a crown. All the doors to the rooms will be locked, and I am sure nobody in tilling would be so ill-bred as to force them open. And why should anybody want to trample on your flower beds, especially as Copland has finally put them in order? <laughs> Perhaps you would like to hire a menagerie, a tableau vivant of tigers and sharks in the living room. But that would mean half the room turned into a water tank and the other half full of horse flesh for the tigers. No, I think not. But thanks all the same for the suggestion. I say again, I will not have my home put in jeopardy. And I say again that so long as I am the tenant here, I shall ask who I please and when I please. Or do you expect me to send you a list of friends I ask for dinner for your approval? My dear, of course, you mm, may. My dear Elizabeth, I must beg of you not to call me Lulu. Such a dreadful abbreviation. How would you like to be called? Lib Lib, or something like that. Yes, Grosvenor, what is it? Uh, the ironmonger is here, ma'am. He says he'll have to put in extra large screws, seeing as how the others were pulled out. He must do whatever is called for to make the door safe. Very good, madam. I hope I have all permission to leave my own house. Of course, my dear. How nice of you to pop in. Door. 
Dear Elizabeth gave it such a biff that the chain became unhinged. Oh. Who was the more unhinged, the chain or Elizabeth? It was difficult to say. Well, I hope you gave her what for, did you? There were several matters she wanted to see me about. Mm. First, she expects you and I to send a picture for the Tilling Art Exhibition. Oh. Well, there can't be any harm in that, surely. None at all. I shall send my sketch of your cottage with the crooked chimney. All right. And I shall send my pastel of the church, shall I? <laughs> then, she made it clear that she didn't approve of our little garden get-together, huh? In fact, she forbade me to allow it. And? Well, we had a little chat about that. Well, apparently there are half a dozen watercolours sent in by guess who? Miss Mapp herself. No. Yes, and Mr. Wise has contributed a still life of a teacup and a wallflower. And Mrs. Wise? <laughs> a portrait of the King of Italy. Oh. Whom she saw at a great distance last spring. <laughs> <laughs> now, all these, of course, following the president of Burlington House, will be hung on the line without dispute because... The Wises and Elizabeth are the hanging committee. Exactly. <laughs> and quaint Irene has offered one at which Miss Mapp feels the line must be drawn. Women wrestlers. <laughs> Although Mr. Wise will no doubt commend it as very powerful. Oh, of course. <laughs> <laughs> From the frame maker, Miss. Mr. Pilson and Mrs. Lucas. Thank you. Yes. I persuaded my weak wire to seeing madrigals and catches at our get-together, Mr. Lucas. Oh, splendid, splendid. Oh, and I've one other suggestion to make. Of course, Padre. Do you think we should entertain the members of the workhouse to tea? Those that are not bedridden, of course. I think it's a splendid idea to give them a little treat. Ah. Oh, Miss Coles, and who's the time of day were ye? Uh, Mistress Lucas and myself are speaking of our wee get-together. Now, uh, you have promised to render for us your The Boy Stood on the Burning Deck. The boy stood on the burning deck, Lulu went, Oh, but he had fled, dear. <laughs> <laughs> the flames that lit the battle's wreck, sweet one, shone round him over the deck. Ah, uh, Mistress Ma. We're speaking of our wee get-together. Uh, what contribution would ye wish to make? I'm afraid I shall be too busy to participate, Padre. The art exhibition, you know. Oh, you'll supply a muckle of fruit for the refreshment tent. As uh, much as I should love to, Padre, dear, I'm afraid it's impossible. I have contracted all my garden produce to Mr. Twistyford. The fruit is no longer mine. Perhaps you could let the Padre have some from Diver's Garden, unless you've sold that too. Here, reservoir. Come along, Cotton. Well, I mustn't stand daft in here. Have my sermon to think of? I'm afraid my wee recitation put the map in the fire, but <laughs> yes, I'll do it at the wee get-together. Oh, good. Come and have dinner one night soon. Yes, if I needn't dress and you'll send me home afterwards. I'm half a mile out of town and I may be tipsy. Oh. Major Benji says you've got jolly good booze. Cray high the king, God bless him. Bye. <laughs> Good morning, Mr. Twist Event. I'll take six of Miss Mapp's green gauges, if they're not overripe. For me, Fall Jam. Yes, sir. It's a sort of parcel. Is it Grosvenor? 
Pass the matter. It's for you. Whatever can it be? Come in. Lucia, it's me. Oh, no, momento. <laughs> You too. Yes. The hanging committee of the Tilling Art Gallery sends cordial thanks for your submission. It regrets that owing to the limited space at its disposal, it is not possible to exhibit your work of art. Exactly how mine is worded. What are we going to do? I'll need a little time to decide. Only one thing, surely. This means war.